So I want you to imagine that you've gone to sleep in your own home and you wake up and everything's different. You're not in your own home. You're not anywhere you recognize. In fact, nothing about the layout, the colors, anything is quite right. And you're, you're met with immediate confusion and some, some level of panic because you don't know what's going on. But then imagine this room of unfamiliarity starts to become familiar. You start looking around and you see, okay, I, I know this, I know my lamp. That's my lamp. But what is my lamp doing in this place that I've never been here before? And then slowly the layout of the room is familiar. Then you start to realize I think I know who I am again. And you start to re remember your, your context. And then you're just kind of left with a feeling of, of uh, like you had just come out of a fight or flight. And it's the strangest thing. I, I would say that I probably experienced that for several years where regardless of the context of why I'd, I had been, I had woken up, if it was, you know, somebody woke me up, an alarm woke me up, I woke up on my own, I'd ha I would have this period of, of confusion. And I think that was very challenging for a while, but I, I think it kind of gave, uh, potentially gives some insight into how somebody who suffers from dementia might experience things. Because when we describe, you know, when we, when, when we describe their perception, we, we often talk about confusion, anger, stress, um, and I feel that there's a chance that these two things could be um, maybe not causally related, but, but experientially related. And perhaps one can teach us about the other. And, you know, if we were to think about what was happening there, it was... It's a, it's a period of, of uh, like a state where you are neither yourself living in the world you know, and you're also not yourself exploring it. It's a weird gray area where a lot of information is just missing. And it's almost like your capacity to hold on and learn about your environment is also reduced. So it's not that I could look around and just go, okay, I know that, 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 you know, it's not like you have that kind of, that, that kind of buffering, um, you know, built in. It's almost like you, like the amount of storage you have at any given moment is reduced and you're relying on your own, on your own innate, um, like base state, if you will, to, to differentiate what's going on and make sense of the world. And it's almost like it's that, that RAM buffer increases. Um, you get to fully load back into the moment. So I guess at the time, my dreams used to be quite lucid regularly. And this was before I knew about lucid dreaming. Um, at least uh, that there was a, there was a word for it, and there was information about it, and I I would often live through experiences, or or more more frequently some more like abstract type um, scenes where I might not necessarily even have been there. So 
it's kind of like if you watch a movie, you know you're not there, you're not behind the camera, but you, you're experiencing depth of information um, through, through what you can see. And I feel like a lot of what I could see was not visual. A lot of it was actually contextual. So it's almost like if you could have a normal, uh, you know, maybe a, a boring uh, static footage of something where visually nothing happens whatsoever. No music, nothing. But you could, instead of using sound or, or optics, you could just tell someone well, right now is, uh, is, uh, happy or sad, um, or it's a complex feeling, um, or even maybe a complex idea. Um, and these things could be kind of put together with almost very, very low fidelity, um, because it was very largely context-based. And... Um, even even today, um, I, I'm not sure if this is the the same for everyone, but I would say like it's not it's it'd be like I don't know why, or or maybe it's like more of a I know I know why, but I don't know what maybe, which kind of sounds maybe like the opposite of of what you might normally describe these things as, or it's like. You could imagine yourself, okay, you know you're driving a car. I don't know why I'm driving a car, but I'm knowing you're driving a car. But I would almost say it's like a reversal. It was like, well, I, I, I know why I'm driving the car, but I don't, I don't know that I'm driving a car. I, it's very challenging to explain, but I, I feel like it's like, you know, like the inverse of that. And I, I feel like that's pretty present. Um, in dreams today for me, and certainly uh, very, very heavily uh, throughout that time of my life. I feel that in the waking life, it's all still the same mind. I think it's different levels of control, different levels of, um, of continuity. Um, and Despite that, I still think there's an underlying structure and hierarchy of, of uh, person A experiences their dreams differently than person B in the same way that person A and B experience a real life moment differently. So if you were to have a crowd of people and they all watch the same thing. I mean, obviously, in, in that example, you have slight differences in angle or whatever, but ultimately, everyone will still kind of see something a little bit different because I think what you add to your, your memory, what you add to your, um, you know, even, even your real-time memory is shaped by your previous experiences. And previous experiences aren't necessarily, you know, just, okay, what you saw, but it can also be how you interpreted what you saw, where you, how you filed that in your, in your mind, and what you, you know, what, what you felt like the implications were, or the most important parts. And in that sense, I feel that in, in consciousness of, of uh, being awake, it's almost like you could still access that same ability to think in either a dream state or a wake state and just accept maybe that, that some of the, the properties you're working with are different, but you're still fundamentally the same person experiencing things. So I feel like for me in a day-to-day -day life, Maybe it means that, um, that, that exaggerated, um, like context reversal, re reversal could be still present. Um, 
in in ways maybe aren't fully understood because it's hard to describe the the core underlying uh, mechanisms of thought when you don't have contrast to to highlight the differences. So it's almost like if you could live a day in somebody else's mind, truly as them, not superficially as them, but truly as somebody else as they see the world, how could, how could you take that with you? And since we can't do that, at least not now, we can study what other people do, what, they, what they've spoken about, what they've created, what decisions were in mind, and maybe you could understand some a, a lot about a person through through their work, through their writing, through their their photography, anything, because it's all it's all pieces of a much bigger puzzle. <laughs>